their strategy was to launch just a single product every single month. And like with POD, you can do so much more, you didn't have to worry about it. So what we did was we bumped that number up to four collections every single month. So essentially a weekly launch. Mm -hmm. The first month, their revenue upped by like 60%. Uh, the second month, same. So essentially, again, like having those launches is actually super important. Welcome to Ideas Fulfilled, a podcast by Printful Enterprise with your host, Eels. Today, I'm joined by Dan Rosenthal, customer success team lead at Printful. Printful is a print-on-demand company that helps its customers turn their ideas into premium products. Dan and his team work with Printful's enterprise-level customers and help them achieve their business goals. This means that Dan hears how e-commerce businesses are struggling and how they're coping with their problems and helps them grow despite those problems. Thank you for joining us, Dan. Absolutely. <laughs> so to start off, please tell us a little bit about yourself and what your team does at Printful. Yeah, so I'm leading the customer success team here at Printful uh, and it's part of the sales team. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we're doing is we're helping existing customers grow and scale their business. And I know it sounds a bit abstract, but to give you an example, so the key responsibilities of my team are to develop relationships. Uh, long lasting relationships is super important because it's a long term partnership, essentially, it's not just in and done. So we serve as vertical experts, we consult our customers on their business, on their marketing strategy, on their product strategy, and so much more. So essentially working as part of their team, sometimes more than a part of Printful, if that mm -hmm. makes sense. It does, yeah, totally. So you said long-term partnerships. Do you have like customers you've had since the day you joined Printful? Actually, yes. So I joined Printful uh, back in 2020, September, and I still have customers that I work with. And it's become a friendship rather than just to, like a work relationship and I'm getting wedding pictures and stuff <laughs> like that which is super cool. And what is the size of the customers that you work with? Is it big companies or smaller ones? Essentially the largest customers that Printful has. Uh, we consider them enterprise level businesses so it can be anywhere from let's say a couple hundred thousand in revenue monthly to a couple million uh, in revenue monthly. And it's essentially, it's both solo entrepreneurs and also large corporations that we work with. So it's, yeah, across the board. And what does that relationship look like? Do you have like weekly calls or exchange emails apart from wedding pictures, of course? Yeah, so it's really depends on the customer, but what we strive for is monthly calls to align on their strategy, to actually help them out, to address any challenges that there are. Uh, we have inter like immediate communication on like WhatsApp, Slack, whatever it is. So essentially, it's what is easier for the customer rather than like we're super super flexible. But yeah, monthly calls, uh, constant email communication, exchange of ideas, and so much more. And also meeting them in real life uh, if we got the chance. And uh, what sort of customers are they? Is print on demand their main source of income mostly or is it side hustle it started as a side hustle for most of them but it has become their full-time job essentially because like be being an entrepreneur isn't just like an hour of work every single day as like movies try to portray it it's like actual hands-on um work every single day you have to handle customer support uh marketing designing product launches and everything in everything in between so yeah i would say for most of them and both solo entrepreneurs and also like corporations, merchandise is the primary thing that they do. Obviously, since you work with them, they all use Printful. And can you share why? And perhaps not, not, not just why they use Printful, but why they use print on demand as a business concept? What made them do it? So let's split that question into two different segments. So for all the solo entrepreneurs that we work with, most of them started their business in 2019, 2020. Essentially, when e-commerce was just booming and they wanted to jump on that train and use that opportunity. So for them, on-demand production provided flexibility, absolutely no risk. And if a design flies off the shelves, perfect. If it doesn't, cool, I'll try something else. Yeah. So essentially for them, it was just, yeah, as a means of making more money mm -hmm. when everybody is making money. And for those corporations on-demand model also offers flexibility because we, what we see with the industry is that 
currently with all the uncertainty, uh, mm -hmm. the crisis and everything else is essentially stopping a lot of entrepreneurs from actually like making investments. They're not sure about how much they can actually sell. So they don't want to invest in inventory. They don't want to scale operations. They mm -hmm. don't want to buy warehouses because that's rent, that's employee costs and everything else. So for them, they're trying to optimize the operations, make them leaner, make them more agile. Mm -hmm. And to actually, when opportunities come, they can tackle those. So yeah, I guess like to sum it up, flexibility and opportunity. For those of our listeners who are not familiar with the print-on-demand concept, could you explain a little bit how it works? So essentially the idea is that you don't have to have a physical product located at your home, warehouse, or whatever. So it's just like an idea, essentially, mm -hmm. up on your store. And whenever a customer actually likes it, buys it, that's when we make it. So essentially avoiding any overstock, any inventory issues, um, being more sustainable. Mm -hmm. So you can have a million products on the store that don't actually exist yeah. until somebody actually buys them. And uh, you mentioned before that uh, you work quite closely with the customers trying to figure out how to grow their business. And I think the past year has been a struggle for a lot of e-commerce businesses because after the pandemic died down, um, the order volumes fell quite rapidly. Mm -hmm. What have been their main concerns in the past year from your customers? Going back to that fact that a lot of customers that we work with started in 2019, 2020 when e-commerce was booming, mm -hmm. a lot of them relied on Facebook and Instagram ads to just drive cold traffic to the store. And that's it. Like there were no retention strategies, no nothing. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if a customer came, perfect. You didn't, you didn't care about the customer after the first purchase. So what we're actually seeing is that those entrepreneurs are actually struggling to understand that there's so much more that you have to do. Like that growth that you experienced before was rather unnatural mm -hmm. and fueled by COVID. So what they have to do now is actually adjust their strategy. They have to th start thinking about organic traffic, um, affiliate marketing, influencer marketing, email campaigns and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So essentially there's so much more that they actually have to do to grow mm -hmm. their business. Those customers that haven't adjusted are actually seeing a decline of like 40%, 50% year over year, which is sad to see, but yeah, that's the reality. What is the reason when customers don't adjust? Is it they think you're not telling them the right information or they just don't have the resources to adjust? I'd say it's both because like essentially in that relationship, I'm still a representative of Printful, right? Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes difficult to overcome that like mental block that hey this guy is a salesperson yeah but i'm not i'm real i really want to help out because like your success is my success mm -hmm. so that's one thing and the second thing is that yeah resources are limited and they're sometimes working like 12 hours 16 hours to actually like keep the business running and there's struggles like you know again like taxes mm -hmm. uh customers complaining, like something going wrong, like snowstorm hitting your city, yeah. like all of those things. And it's just, it's tough for them. I think that it's uh, underrated how much work actually running a business is. Yeah. Do you have any examples where customers have succeeded in adjusting their strategy when working with you? So I can give you two examples. Uh, sadly, can't mention the names because it's all white label, but yeah. So there's this guy from New York running his business. And again, he's a solo entrepreneur. And Back in like 2020, what he was doing, he was mostly selling T-shirts. Mm -hmm. uh, and like that's, I think, a product that a lot of customers default to. So we started working again. He was the typical case of just running cold traffic through the store and mm -hmm. profiting. When that started changing, um, we started analyzing his store performance, conversion rates and everything else. So that's what we began with. Mm -hmm. We actually completely redesigned the store to focus more on the brand, to focus more on the products, to focus more on the usability. So that was the first thing, essentially driving up that conversion rate. The second thing that we did, we started focusing more on retaining customers, not just getting new ones. Mm -hmm. And we did that by focusing on email campaigns. Now, like email is generating like 40% of his total revenue every single month, mm -hmm. which is absolutely awesome. It doesn't take too much effort. It's mostly yeah. automated. The second thing we did, we started launching more 
products on the store. So mm-hmm. not just t-shirts, but like hoodies, sweatshirts, accessories, home and living products. In the first year, his revenue, no, his average order value as a result of that grew by 26.7%, if oh, I'm wow. not mistaken, which is super, right? It's mm. 20, 26% extra revenue, right? Just by doing that. So, and so for his business, 2022 was actually like 20 plus percent better than the year before. So like when everybody else is struggling, he actually succeeded. And another customer, so we're working with a lot of Japanese anime stores uh, mm-hmm. that seems to be trending right now. And there was this guy that their strategy was to launch just a single product every single month. And like with POD, you can do so much more, you don't have to worry about it. So what we did was we bumped that number up to four collections every single month. So essentially a weekly launch. Mm-hmm. The first month, their revenue upped by like 60%. Uh, the second month, same. So essentially, again, like having those launches is actually super important. You mentioned adding products as one of the strategies that might help. Mm. Is there such a thing as too much products on a store? There is a careful line. <laughs> yeah, because like if you complicate the page too much, then essentially what you're doing is you're making it difficult for the customer to choose. And I feel like with e-commerce everybody has like super short attention span. Mm -hmm. So the quicker you can get them through the page, the better. So it is still important to like have a best-selling collection, have like new in products and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. essentially to like spark interest for things that are trending. But at the same time, you need to test those things constantly. So don't rely on like the same product you sold in 2020 to still be successful right now. Like change it up, test uh, do A-B testing, like there's so many tools that you can actually use. But again, like it takes resources. So yeah, yeah you have to pick your battles. And uh, you also mentioned that uh, T-shirts is still sort of the default product that people use. Yeah. Do you think it's time to move on from that? Or is there still a market for T-shirts with designs? I guess like a counter question would be how many T-shirts do you own compared to like other products? Probably more than <laughs> anything else, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Well, I think that the trends are changing a bit. So perhaps people are going away from like massive graphic designs to product categories categories like embroidery that's more minimalistic, Mm -hmm. also seems a lot more premium. So changing it up that way, perhaps you don't have to switch away from t-shirts completely, just test new techniques out. And uh, listening to all this, it sounds like you give your customers a lot of advice in very different spheres so to speak it's marketing it's product development it's uh, ui ux design from the sounds of it how do you how do you keep up with the trends how do you know what to suggest to your customers so in my team we have people that specialize in certain things so i have one guy that is an expert in uh facebook advertising Mm -hmm. so whenever i have a question i go to him and like consult and and get his opinion on stuff um, then we have people that are super good with design and just that visual aspect. So we work a lot in the team uh, and we try to brainstorm together, analyze certain customer cases together to actually come up with the best solution. Apart from that, we're also learning a lot individually. So I'm usually scrolling through the, even the Printful blog, uh, mm-hmm. as cliche it sounds, but still like <laughs> I'm going through that daily to actually check for new ideas. Mm-hmm. I'm reading uh, Shopify blogs. I'm mm-hmm. reading news on e-commerce, fashion. There's so much that you have to follow. Uh, so yeah, I try to set a dedicated time for that, like an hour a day, just mm-hmm. for reading up, uh, reading and keeping up uh, with the latest news. Yeah, I think that's the difficulty. There's so much that it's like, <laughs> where, where do you even start with all that? Exactly. And once you have that information, how do you share that with customers? Are you more proactive when communicating this or are you waiting for the customers come to you i think what categorizes the customer success work is that proactivity Mm -hmm. so we're not waiting for problems to occur we try to adjust on the way and proactively suggest things that you should kind of start thinking about because they will be relevant in a month or two. What have been some of the most challenging situations perhaps when working with those customers for existing customers that like have 100% of their business with Printful. In a lot of cases, again, like people still rely on Facebook advertising, Instagram advertising, Mm -hmm. and they sometimes get shadow blocked. 
Yeah. So what, what does it mean, shadow block? Essentially, like they're locked out of their accounts or they don't have access to advertising anymore and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So essentially, in those cases, like I'm not a Facebook rep, right? Yeah. I can help essentially. But what we do, uh, we have huge network of partners. Whatever the challenge is, we will always find a person to help out. So yeah, it's just random situations that you never can actually prepare for. But mm -hmm. that's what I love about the team is their enthusiasm and like willingness to help out in every single situation. And then on the other um, end of the spectrum, we have customers that don't have 100% of their business with Printful and they still have like a smaller in-house operation mm -hmm. uh, with specific products, let's say. Yeah. Uh, and we have quite a few customers in Texas and you probably have seen how Texas periodically gets hit by massive yeah. snowstorms. So and imagine it's like, the end of the world at that moment. Exactly. For them. <laughs> so the whole business just closes for a week, two, you know, sometimes more. And in those situations... What we can actually do is just transfer all of those orders coming in to us and just don't don't keep the customers waiting, keep them happy, right? Mm -hmm. So again, that flexibility, readiness to jump in, uh, yeah, and giving all the resources that we have. Sounds like a very dynamic work for your team. To say the least. <laughs> <laughs> How do you handle the situations when the customer is not meeting the goals that you've set together because I, as I, as I understand you do sort of decide okay this is what we want to achieve in the mm -hmm. next three months how yeah. what happens if they don't that actually happens quite often uh because again with that changing environment things come up mm -hmm. right and so if they're starting to struggle we always try to figure out like where are they spending most of their time on mm -hmm. right and that's sometimes customer support, that's sometimes design, that's sometimes like making creatives. Mm -hmm. And we try to offload as much as possible from non-revenue driving activities. Yeah. And we try to offer them our resources. So mm -hmm. like, for example, we have a white label customer support team mm -hmm. that we can easily give to the customer and essentially they're acting as your support ag agents. Mm -hmm. So you as an owner don't have to spend like two, three hours a day working on customer support. Or if let's say you're a creator making videos, why should you worry about making designs mm -hmm. when that content creation is what drives your revenue? Again, like let's cooperate with our design team, let's help you. And it can be a long-term partnership, it can be just a one-off project, doesn't matter, but like, if you're struggling, like let's let's offload stuff. How open are customers to those suggestions? They're careful, uh, of course, but like we try to make it as simple as possible. Let's try it out for a week. Let's try it out, you know, let's make a single design. Let's mm -hmm. see how it goes. Like if it starts, you know, performing well, they're open to the idea of making this a more long term. Mm -hmm commitment essentially i know that your team every quarter you make several hundreds of calls with your customers so it means you talk to a lot of different mm -hmm. businesses different types of businesses what do you feel are the most missed opportunities in e-commerce that they mm -hmm. don't take advantage of i still think it's a lot of customers are using on demand but not using its full potential Mm -hmm. Again, like going back to that example of launching products. If you use Printful, but you only launch a single collection every single quarter, like it doesn't make sense. That's mm -hmm. not how you're going to be successful. So not, not only that, but it's also focusing on existing customers. Again, like a lot of customers default to driving cold traffic. Mm -hmm. Why should you when customer acquisition costs are just through the roof, right? Yeah. So focus on things that you already do well, focus on customers that already love you, mm -hmm. you know, make the best service for them and then tackle the next thing. I, I think you, like you have to choose your battles because you, you can't do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, let's fix one thing, then get to the next. Top three things to retain your customers. We were just talking uh, with my, uh, with my team about like what makes customers successful mm -hmm. and we came to four. So the first one is actually having constant product drops mm -hmm. because with every customer that we work with we see that the more you actually make the more revenue is actually coming in so mm -hmm. like that's the first thing 
second. But don't just to follow up on that. Don't people get tired of constant product drops, or not really in your experience? I don't think so, because like customers are essentially buying from you because they're they like your design. Mm-hmm. Uh, the second thing is constant communication, mm-hmm. and that doesn't just mean like email. That also means uh, Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, TikTok. Sometimes Reddit, uh, SMS, like everything, but constant communication and being in touch with your customers. Because if you're not, somebody else is. Yeah. And with competition in the industry being absolutely insane with super low barriers to entry, uh, you have to do that. The third thing is focusing on promotional activities and like going after like Valentine's Day collections, mm-hmm. Easter collections, St. Patrick's designs, um, you know, holiday discounts. Just make it exciting for the customer and make, uh, like give them a reason to come your, come to your store to find something that they might like. Mm-hmm. And the fourth one is just don't focus on things that don't drive revenue. Like try to outsource as much as possible or try to like hire people internally. Mm-hmm. But Focus on things that actually like grow your business and not things that don't like customer support or you know, making designs. That's uh, solid advice. <laughs> and um, looking ahead to the future, uh, what do you see as the biggest challenges for e-commerce businesses? Uncertainty. Mm-hmm. Like again, econo- economy is slowing down. People are you know in debt. Uh, I know that the U.S. right now is in one of the worst debt situations uh, they have ever been. Mm -hmm. So like that uncertainty, again, you can't invest in things that like are just that investment. (laughs) Let's put it that way. So like for you to be investing in machinery, for you to be investing in like warehouses, like what if it doesn't work out? Like what are you going to do in six months? Mm -hmm. Who's going to buy it afterwards? Again, like those things that don't drive revenue is just like huge risk. So customers shouldn't focus on that. They should focus on things that do make an actual difference. The competition where it is right now, it forces you to innovate. So it forces you to like test new products, test new channels, you know, get mm-hmm. in touch with people, actually like listen to what your customers are saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's it's a tough battle. You have to do a ton of things to actually be successful right now. You mentioned listening to your customers. Um, is that something that businesses do enough in your experience? I don't think so. I, th- I think they try to rely on data. If you have like a direct channel to your customers, like closed groups or like even Instagram DMs, mm-hmm. why not just like hit them up, like ask how they're doing mm-hmm. and you can identify your top fans. You probably see them in your comments on Instagram or like you see uh, purchases constantly coming in. Like, why not just reach out to them and ask like what else we could do like Mm -hmm. to make it fun for you? I think community has been a buzzword in marketing for (laughs) for a while now. Do you think it's blown out of proportion or there's some truth to having a community as a good way to do marketing? I think a lot of people confuse community and just a fan base. And like having that community means that the fans and your customers are actually like interacting with each other participating in like product creation ideas and essentially driving that business forward Mm -hmm. and that's super powerful and we have a quite a few customers that actually have like closed discord groups or Mm -hmm. closed like again instagram groups and like those close friends and they constantly exchange ideas and what you see is that you don't actually need a million customers you actually need like a couple hundred true fans that will just support your business no matter what. And on the same topic, influencer marketing, yes, no? Yes, yes, definitely yes. Just as a great experiment, if nothing more. <laughs> and like, what what's the worst thing that can happen? Okay, well, if people want to work with you, work with Printful, what should they do? Where should they go? Essentially, just go to printful.com, create an account, and yeah, just start experimenting. Thanks for listening to our conversation with Dance. If you want to work with Printful, check the episode description. You'll find all the necessary links and information there. And don't forget to tune in for the next episodes of Ideas Fulfilled by Printful Enterprise.